Welcome to Unit 3. In this unit, we're going to cover two main topics, differentiability and computing derivatives. And at the end, we're going to include a small section re reviewing trigonometric functions and inverse trigonometric functions. In the last unit, we introduced the definition of the derivative. And this is a very clearly a calculus idea, both because of the derivative and because of the way it was structured. Remember, it was a limit definition or a definition involving computing the limit of something. Just to get us reviewed and up to speed before we jump into other interpretations of the derivative, just review a few of the concepts. When we're talking about derivatives, the inherent graphical idea is the idea of a slope. And we saw it first in the idea of the slope of a secant line. So if we have a graph and a function, whenever we pick two points on that graph and connect them with a line, that would be a secant line. And the slope of that line, so the rise over the run, is what tells you the average rate of change or the average velocity if it happens to be a position versus time graph. Or if your graph happened to represent velocity already, then this slope would represent an average acceleration. The units of the slope of a secant line depend on the inputs of the original graph that they're taken from. So if we had meters and distance or time and seconds, then the slopes would be in terms of meters per second. We take the vertical axis and divide by the units of the horizontal axis because a slope would be the amount of change in meters divided by the amount of change in time or in seconds here. The derivative is that closely related idea to the secant and it involves average slopes but it's the limit of the average slopes as the delta x or h or delta t, the change in the independent variable as it approaches zero, we calculate the slope in the limit case and that gives us the value of the derivative. And again, there's lots of parallel statements that can be said that are equivalent to the derivative. It's a formula for slopes of tangent lines. So that's the implication here that we're talking about the slope at a single point, unlike the averages, which require two points, this limit lets us get the slope at a single point Another way to phrase that is the instantaneous rate of change. And of course, if we're talking about a position graph, we can talk about the instantaneous velocity, or if we have velocity, its rate of change would be acceleration. And just exactly like the previous example, if we found a graph and we're trying to estimate slope values on it, let's say this is our graph here, and we found the tangent line or the slope of the tangent line here. The slope of the tangent line has units, in this case here, meters per second. Again, the units of the slope will be in rise over run and the units follow the same, how much rise divided by how much run.